The Prologue, 2064 The building shouldn't have been here. Officially, it didn't exist, and it didn't show up on any map and wasn't connected to the Holonet in any way. The Russian government had no records of its existence, yet here it was, protected by high fences topped with razor wire and patrolled by men in Arctic grey camouflage. The guards carried Russian assault rifles, promising death to anyone who wandered into the field of fire. Bobby pulled his crimson leather coat tight, hunching his shoulders against the biting cold and Arctic wind. The shallow, rocky crevasse overlooking the faded brick building did little to ward off the elements, and he wondered how he'd gotten himself into such a mess. In all his short years, he had never seen a more desolate and depressing place. There was nothing for miles, and the rugged tundra was little more than shades of grey, without a hint of life and only the howling wind in his ear for company. They had seen vast forests of evergreen on the flight up, but this far north everything was dwarfed and stunted, desolate, like life refused to take hold. A hiss of static in his ear brought his attention back to the mission at hand. Boss man, the kid and I are in position. Just waiting for you to give the word, said a playful voice over the comms. How many times do I have to tell you, Tamika, it's hypermass month, said another voice high-pitched and whiny, like the boy hadn't been through puberty. Bobby couldn't help but smile to himself. Tamika was only a few years older than Daniel, the kid, and only two years younger than himself. But for some reason she treated him like he was an infant, barely able to wipe his own arse. Maybe it was the fact that he insisted on using their ridiculous code names that Bobby had almost managed to forget. Acknowledged, hold position, said Bobby putting a gloved hand to his ear while switching comm channels. Finn, give me a sit rep. Any sign that we've been spotted? Are we clear? I've got the Odin in a holding pattern. The transport's not really built for stealth, but I've managed to extend my cloak to cover it and the lot of you. Anyone looking your way will just see more of this shite-looking tundra, said Finn in an accent that reminded Bobby of home, the places he grew up, Back Bay and Southie. Keep that cloak going, no matter what, Finn. From now on, this entire area is on lockdown. No signal gets in or out. Understood? Roger, Lieutenant. I got your back. Closing the line, Bobby fingered the silver lieutenant bars on his collar, still surprised to find them there. It made sense after the last mission, and given his current duties, Major Washington and the Upper Brass decided he needed an official position in the chain of command. OK, I'll go in first, get their attention, Bobby said, returning to their secure channel and flexing his limbs to drive away the bone-chilling cold. After that, I need Tamika to make a door for us. Daniel, you're on clean-up. After their acknowledgements, Bobby unhooked a scarred metal baton about the length of his forearm from his belt. Emerging from his hidden crevice, he broke into a sprint, his long legs eating up wide swathes of terrain as he approached the high fence that surrounded the building. Up ahead, he could see the distinctive shimmer of where Finn's cloak ended. The moment he crossed that line, he would be visible, exposed to attack. With a grunt, he vaulted high in the air, easily catapulting himself over the fence. Bobby could only imagine how he looked to the guards patrolling the narrow space between the fence and the building. A whip-thin stranger with a trailing long red coat flapping like a cape, appearing suddenly in mid-air. He fell between the first pair of beefy men, his long limbs lashing out in a blinding flurry of sharp elbows and quick kicks, his superior strength and speed, snapping bones and incapacitating with single blows. As the two men fell, Bobby saw another man coming around the corner of the washed-out building. Not wanting to lose his momentum, Bobby raised a clawed hand, pulling hard at the deep well of rage and fury that had sustained him all his life. Thin tendrils of inky black and red smoke exploded from his fingertips, swarming toward the guard like hungry serpents. The tendrils bore into the hapless man's face and shoulders, coiling around his throat. Even after seeing the effect many times, Bobby felt a sense of awe as he stole the other man's life. His victim's skin fading from pink to grey, as a lifetime occurred in a single moment, leaving only the husk of a thing that looked long dead in its place. 
Bobby trembled as a rush of adrenaline pulsed through him, making his heart race and quickening his breath. The ground beneath his feet trembled, and the sound of gunfire filled the air as Bobby rounded the corner. He found Tamika standing above a pair of broken and battered men, her short red coat wide open showing her midriff. She was tiny, almost like a small child. She had dark skin and eyes, with high cheekbones that made her appear older than her fifteen years. She certainly never acted like any teenager he had ever met. She worked hard, never complained, always going out of her way to fit in. She looked up from the mayhem at her feet and gave him a salute, like a student showing off her work in hopes of impressing a teacher. Of all the new recruits, she was the one most like him, forced to grow up quickly. A hoarse, terrified scream from above made both of them look, Bobby and Tamika, managing to jump aside to avoid body after body plummeting from high above, the remaining soldiers crashing to the ground in broken heaps of twisted limbs. Moments later, Daniel landed gingerly on the frozen earth, a beaming smile on his cherubic face. Among all of them, Daniel was the youngest, small for his thirteen years. He embraced his role fully, having spent hours at a time practising his control of local gravitational fields, making him a deadly addition to the team. Try not to look so smug, kid, said Tamika, shaking her head as she eyed the fallen. These were real people with friends and families, lives you just cut short. Smiling at his handiwork, Daniel shrugged his small shoulders. They're soldiers guarding an evil-looking Russian lair. I'm sure they were all bad. Besides, what are we going to do, tie them up? He's right, Bobby replied, nodding absently while running his hands along the heavy metal door that served as the only way into the squat building. I can't feel anything alive on the other side. Tamika, do you mind making us an entrance? Taking a deep breath, she motioned for them to move away, her eyes narrowing. Having witnessed her do this many times, Bobby was still mesmerised. He blinked, and the young woman he knew vanished. She was suddenly towering over him, her slight form now a mass of polished stone, her skin and hair transformed into a smooth sheen like blackened glass, reflecting the little sunlight there was. The first blow from her heavy fist nearly deafened him, sounding like Hephaestus pounding on his anvil, leaving a deep groove in the metal. The second tore through the door like it was made of paper. With a grunt, she peeled it open like it was a soda can, revealing a darkened interior within. Her obsidian body made a horrible noise, the stone grinding against metal as she forced her way in, putting Bobby's teeth on edge. With a toss of her head, she motioned for them to follow as she led the way into the building. They found themselves in a wide open space, the interior empty except for cold concrete walls and dim naked bulbs hanging from thin wires that vanished into the ceiling. Why would anyone guard an empty building? asked Tamika, shifting down to her normal shape and size while peering into the shadows. Russians are crazy, said Daniel, his high-pitched voice louder than normal in the cavernous room. One of our neighbours back home used to sit out in his underwear and drink vodka all day, so who knows? Shush, Bobby said in a low voice, raising a hand for quiet. Closing his eyes, he turned slowly, extending his senses, feeling for that odd itch on the inside of his skull he had developed not long after his ascension. He could sense everything about the people around him. He could feel Daniel's heart racing with nervous excitement, feel hunger gnawing at Tamika's stomach, and somewhere at the edge of his ability, something alive yet not. Down! His eyes shot open like a bolt of electricity coursed through him. Without a word, he raced off to the corner where he felt the strange tingle. Bobby! Tamika shouted, breaking into a sprint after him. Ignoring her, he ran for a shadowy corner, the feeling growing stronger with each stride. He stopped and fell to one knee, finding a faint square outline on the floor with a heavy steel beam set into the centre of it. Whatever they were protecting is down here, he said, glancing back and forth between them. Daniel pressed his lips together, his cheeks red from the effort of running. Major Washington ordered us to eliminate anyone here, take the building and then call it a day, said the round-faced man staring down at the odd door. 
Bobby licked his lips, nodding his head, and said, Whatever is down here was important enough to have it not exist on any official record, not to mention having armed soldiers patrolling behind barbed wire to protect it, he continued, shaking his head. And something about this place is making my senses go haywire. Doesn't that make you the least bit curious? finished Bobby, glancing at both of them, his eyes wide like saucers. Yeah, yeah, it does, Tamika agreed with a quick nod. Let's do it. Tapping the comm in his ear, Bobby opened a line to the transport. Finn, the building is abandoned, but we've found a bunker of some kind we're going to investigate. Got it, sir. It's real quiet out here. Keep in regular contact. The two of you help me with this, Bobby said, grasping the metal beam that held the door in place. He had expected resistance and difficulty opening the heavy stone slab, but it came up smoothly seeming to almost float out of the way and revealing a circular stairwell of cut stone steps that vanished into the darkness. He hesitated for only a moment before stepping into the unknown. Behind him, Daniel and Tamika followed, their hard-soled leather boots echoing in an eerie symphony with each step. They descended for a long time, Bobby's stomach turning over with worry the deeper they went, the mad itch in his brain growing stronger the closer they got to whatever set off his strange senses. He sensed the change the moment it happened. One moment he was descending on crude steps made of concrete. The next, he was on a landing of some sort, walking on smooth crystal, refined, polished, that somehow felt familiar, but he couldn't explain why. Before he could say anything, the way ahead of him began to glow. It was subtle at first, and he thought his eyes were playing tricks on him, that he was imagining the strobing colours. Then, as if he had tripped some sort of signal, the whole area came alive with a soft glow from the floor, highlighting the path in front of him. They found themselves in a narrow corridor, stretching on and leading to another open area that he couldn't quite make out. The walls were like the floor, made of a multifaceted crystal that reflected what little light there was. Behind him, Tamika cleared her throat. I got a bad feeling about this place, bossman. We should leave it for Major Washington and his cronies, she said, her voice little more than a whisper. For once I agree with Tamika, this isn't fun anymore, Daniel said, his eyes darting in all directions. What I'm sensing is just beyond this corridor, said Bobby, picking up the pace and motioning for them to follow. Coming to the end of the walkway, Bobby's jaw fell open, a chill running up his spine. Walking into the chamber beyond felt alien and familiar all at once. The room wasn't large, smaller than the simple brick building above, but the walls were covered with technology that looked strangely familiar. Leaning at a slight angle against the walls were tubes, cylinders as tall as he was, dozens of them. They were different from the ones he knew. These appeared to have grown from the crystal surrounding them, the front of them being clear and not opaque. He could sense in each one something not quite human existing, not alive but not dead either. Are those ascension chambers? asked Tomika in a trembling whisper. Are those ascension chambers? asked Tomika in a trembling whisper. The thing they use to give us powers? Bobby nodded, having the same thought. His mind raced back to the city beneath the sands in Utah, remembering his terrible vision of a world at war, all fought with technology like this. Gathering his courage, he put his face inches from the transparent cover and used the flashlight on his smartphone to get a better look inside. He jumped back, stumbling and almost falling on his behind. What the hell? What is it? Is someone alive in there? Daniel demanded. Bobby stood up, a hollow pit forming in his stomach. He held up the phone once again to the crystal surface, still not believing what his senses were telling him. Alive, yes, he mumbled in a low voice, but it's not human, not by a long shot.